Cause I did it my way, none of y'all can say In this life for the next one Watch me, I will be the best of I am what I am today Cause I did it my way, none of y'all can say This is Danny Brown. Thank you for listening to The Deal. I really want to thank Matt Hannaford, MVP Sports Group, last week. Uh, He came in and really dropped some knowledge on the baseball world, and we had a huge, huge response to him. So thank you all, you new listeners who tuned in, and we appreciate it. We did win an award, the Best of Los Angeles New Business Podcast, so thank you for that as well. This week, I am fired up to have my good buddy, I've known him since elementary school, Greg Shane. He's one of the best high-end luxury home builders in America. And I'm talking about mega mansions, 50 million, 100 million dollar mansions. He's been in the game his whole career. His stepfather was in the game. A really cool, fun, interesting guy. And, you know, building some of the most spectacular single family homes you've ever seen. So we're getting into that and I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for tuning in. Please let your friends and associates know subscribe comment anything you can do we really really appreciate every follower we get and every comment we get thank you ladies and gentlemen Welcome to The Deal with Danny Brown. Today, I am fired up to have a great guest. This is a real special guest. This is high-pressure development, high-stakes development, luxury, high-end. Greg Shane from Shane Development. Welcome, my friend. How are you? Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Um, thanks, I love that thanks intro. For coming. I appreciate that. Well, that was it. Uh, <laughs> Wasn't expecting all that, but... Keep it coming. Yeah, when Greg Shane's in the house, you got to pay pay respects and give you your props. I mean, you're a guy that's been building homes a long time. You've been doing it your whole career. You grew up in it. My uh, whole so life, We yes. can get into that, a little background, but just so for people that don't know Greg Shane, he's building homes in Brentwood Park, all over Brentwood Park, Palisades, Riviera, Huntington, Beverly Hills. Bel-Air. We're talking big time, Bel Air. We're talking high, high end, talking balls of steel, high end, both as a spec builder and a lot as a uh, uh, builder for hire yeah. as well with yeah. a lot of ultra Working high net worth clients. Now. So before That's we, actually more pressure than doing the specs. Uh, I'm sure I can't imagine what yeah, kind of pressure. Because uh, they're like, pressure I need it put- done yesterday. Why is it costing so much? What, right. What is this delay? Like, yes. It's one thing after another. Make but this when change doing- and I want you to pay for that change, <laughs> even I've, though I'm making the change. I haven't but- had that yet, <sighs> but... And hope to not have that. Knock yeah. on wood, we have worked for a lot of great people. Yeah, you're lucky. Really nice you're people, lucky because you stakes at that level, it gets real tricky, real picky, real sticky, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to, you know, got to be careful who you get into relationships with because these are like marriages. And so you don't want to be working with toxic people. And there there are some toxic people, but there's a lot of great people. So yeah. fortunately, you had a lot of really great people to work for and um and some big new projects coming up with a lot of great people so well let's let's start from the beginning rather than getting into uh these big things we'll get we'll get to the letter let's dive into your background you grew up your dad's a builder uh you grew up in that a building family so why don't you start with okay um we can even go back further because you just mentioned when you walked in here that i may be the guy that you've known the longest that you're still in touch with which i was I was blown away by that, but we go way back. Yes. So you can touch on yes. that a little bit, but okay. then walk us through your, your, uh, you know, your family, your background building and how you got into building. Okay. Yeah. So yes, correct. I am a second generation builder. I grew up in the business. Um, I'm was born in Seattle, Washington. My parents got divorced when I was two. My mom took me down to LA, been here ever since. I'm now 49 years old. Yeah. So I've been here for a few years. Yeah. Consider myself a native. Yeah, you're an Angelino uh, now. Angelino, exactly. <laughs> um, so, where should I start? Um, let's just start with school. Yeah, let's start with that. Yeah, and so that's where we yeah we met from. we met in sixth grade at Warner Avenue. Warner Avenue. But um, I actually have a sort of slicey dicey um, school <laughs> past. Um, I went to. In 12 years, I was in 10 different schools, if you can believe it. Yeah. Did you, so, you might have set the record. Uh, possibly. Yeah. And so um, I was kicked out of a few. Yeah. The school that I went to, uh, went to with you, um, I was you asked to leave, unfortunately. You were? You got yes. kicked out of Warner? Yeah. Well, you know, it was sixth grade. Nobody was really paying attention, but I did get kicked out of Warner. 
I was a rebel what? without a cause. I don't know why, but I just was. Um, and so How I the think it was, there was get... like some ADD going on there. Just a little bit and of that. And just, I was bouncing off the walls. And it was like, I never did anything that was like Mrs. Hawkins horrible kicked you out of school. Or Mrs. like Hawkins criminal or... Just had a flashback. Oh, I don't... I don't that's, Mrs. I Hawkins had a big, remember that. bright red really? Bondora okay. type of situation. I remember that. I remember going to her office a few yeah. times, getting into trouble, but never getting kicked out. Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I... I don't you like to use the, the word edge. kicked out, but you know, I was asked to... Asked to leave. leave or maybe move <laughs> forward. They thought that I was like too old for sixth grade. And they thought, well, you know, it's time for halfway. We're already halfway through the year. We should just move you into seventh grade. Got it. So then I went from Warner to Emerson. Um, so, but yeah, I have fond memories of you and I in sixth grade going oh. to this really cool party. Yes. I don't know if you remember that, but um, I think you, you just reminded me a little bit about I it. I did but. remind you a little bit about it. So we were playing Spin the Bottle. Ugh, me, one you, of my favorites. And like five, six, seven other girls. Perfect. And it was just the two of us. So we did stack and the odds so, in our favor. That's right. And so <laughs> Adam, we learned I, I don't have that many memories from that time in my life, but. But you remember but that. I remember that. So well, that's a beautiful coming of age story <laughs> in Little Homeby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So and that's I'm, sure, where I'm sure they're still doing that. At, at uh, I don't Warner want to think not our, our kids are not doing anything of the sort. I don't want to think about oh, that. Goodness. <laughs> well, that well, is a, that's my a beautiful kids memory. My kids don't tell me too much. Good. They're 14 and 16. My daughter so, Hannah is 14. Yeah, you my son teenagers. Hayden is 16. Yeah, so you're. So they're like almost grown up now. Actually, my dad, my daughter, I'm going to her graduation after this. She's graduating from Paul Revere High School. Oh, congrats! I have junior high, and so going she's to Pally? Now officially. In high school at Pally, so I'm wow, really excited. So today's the graduation. Congrats. Um, so anyway. So grew up in LA, went to elementary school yeah, at a few different places. I bounced around to a lot of schools. My parents were developers, so a lot. So some of the reasons was they would, they'd buy a piece of property, we'd move into it, they would fix it up, we'd move into it, then they would sell it, so then we'd have to move ah, again. So nature you know, of we the were beast. Sort of, so you're yeah. moving around selling real estate. Exactly. So... From a very early age, I was, you know, watching and seeing what's going on and just soaking everything up like a sponge, not really realizing that I was learning, mm -hmm. just being exposed to it. And so right. that's what I like that to say just was normal. This is dad's office, normal yeah. stuff. And that was sort of my education, just always wow. sort of either being at the job sites or living in a construction site because that's what my parents did. Um, so I never really excelled in school. Like I said, I bounced around a lot. I was in 10 schools in 12 years. And, um, for some reason I just didn't really have much focus and, uh, just never excelled. And it just, and now when I look back, it's cause I didn't really have, there was nothing that interested me. Yeah. And so when I was able to find That's something common. that. Is it? Is it common? Uh, I, at this age now, when I look back and I yeah. see so many people that I know having such success in life mm -hmm. that okay. did miserable at school and vice versa. I'm seeing kids that had great grades and went to the best schools and they just can't get arrested and figure out the real world. Oh, yeah. It yeah, goes no. both ways. I agree. I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. I'm the latter. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> but no, I see that um, a lot. But, you know. Yeah, and so I just had no focus whatsoever. And now the opposite at, is of today, I'm like laser focused. Yeah. Everything I do, every every project I walk into, every meeting I have, whether it's with an owner or subcontract or whatever it may be, I'm just, I'm laser focused. So, I can imagine. Uh, so it's interesting. So I would actually one day, I'd love to go back to school and like study something I'm very interested in architecture, I'm design, sure that you project would love. management. And then, yeah, and so I'd be yeah. like top of the class. Right. right. Um, I, I don't think it's going to happen. It, you could do it. There's time. Back, there's, back to school. I you know, remember that? No, it's true. <laughs> Ronnie Dangerfield. Ronnie Dangerfield. That was a classic. I just was, he was, I was just reading an article about him yesterday. What? That's so weird. Yeah, I was on internet news yesterday. I missed that one. Okay. So, so, so tell me, your dad was a builder as well. Was he a builder his whole career? Like, how did he get into building in LA luxury? Like, I, what is what was his arc? Was well, it? actually, he was you know he was an entrepreneur like myself, uh -huh. like you. Uh, so he's always had different businesses. Uh, yeah. Actually, when we knew each other, he owned video arcades. I don't know if you know that. You know, like Westworld. Westworld and, arcade. And Westworld. He didn't own Westworld, oh. but he owned 
arcades like, like Westworld that. down one in Huntington Beach, one in Laguna Beach, one in uh, Pasadena. Why didn't we know that? I back don't. Then? It's weird. Yeah, we could have been taken I, totally down there. Exactly. Free games, Pac I mean, Man, all day. Take Galaga me down there on the weekends. Oh, it was Galactic. A lot of, wait, Galactic. oh, he had all of that stuff. Oh, that yeah, stuff. Galactica or Galaga. Yeah, that was the great age. The great oh. age of video games. Yeah, no, it's amazing. So um, you, you don't even know about that. You're too young. For a quarter, you pop in a quarter. You go to the arcade. They had one in no, Westworld exactly. and the Marina and Westwood Village. And then all of a sudden it became went from a quarter to like a dollar a game. Like, what is this? Like, yeah, what is this? Like, that's like, what I was like, I'm done with this. I know, I can't afford this. <laughs> yeah. That was the Five of... games and I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, those are the good old days, the Westwood. Old days. So that's um, so he was an entrepreneur and got into flipping homes or building homes. Yeah. Somehow he just got into it. I think it was maybe through friends, like, you know, real estate investment. Hey, here's a good deal, let's buy it. And you know, he'd he'd uh you know, fix up a house and just sort of, sort of light fix. Nothing like we're doing today it. where there it was major builds like this project I was telling you about in Beverly Hills. Yeah. That massive. foundation is for like a skyscraper, but it's for a modest 10,000 yeah. square foot house. Um, modest 10,000. And how big is the basement going to be? 3,000 feet? 4,000 4, 4, feet. 3,500, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Um, Holy cow. But it's, yeah, the foundations like build the stand, the test of time. So. Got it. So that's where you want to be when the big one hits. Yeah. In that Let me basement. know. Let me know. We'll hook you up. What is that? Is that we'll out of Rex? Well, <laughs> what's on that? a street <laughs> called Mar Lexington? Maryland Drive. It, Maryland Drive. That's Lexington's where we need to be. pretty nice. Yeah. That's yeah, where we need to be down. when it goes down. If a big monsoon hits or a bigger. <laughs> Put it in your iPhone. Get, yes. Get to this basement <laughs> yeah. and just relax. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> All right. So um, you grew up in it. Your dad was building. You're. You've gotten tons yeah. of exposure. So, yeah. What was so, your first? Did you start like, like working as the guy, like the uh, well, there's what happened. Schlepper so, on the construction site, pretty like, much. Yeah, I yeah. was like, you know, 14 years old, I was pushing a broom. Got it. You know, 16 years old, I got my license. Okay, Greg, run to the hardware store and grab us these building materials. So you had your contractor's license that young? No, 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 no. no this oh, real was just like license. working for my dad. Oh. In the business yeah. at his job sites, I was working there after school. I was working there on the weekends, and yeah. so. You know, starting at the bottom and working my way up. And, yeah. um, and you know, I did that for, I worked with him for, you know, I started when I was 14 years old and I worked actually into probably my late 20s with him. Yeah. But yeah. actually was doing projects on the side. On your so, own. So, yeah, I got to a point where I was like 24 years old and I had gone to school with this guy. His dad happened to be a billionaire. And he saw what my father and I were doing. And he's like, you know, and we are sort we were in our, you know, early twenties. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, let's, you know, and I think his dad was like, Come on, David, you get it's time to start doing something. Got it. Um, so he's like, hmm, well, that's well, let me think about this. Uh, I like real estate. And my good friend Greg over here, you know, he him and his dad are like buying properties yeah. in Brentwood Park and they're redeveloping redeveloping them and they're yeah. flipping them and then you know they're making a million dollars in you know the span of 18 months i yeah. i like this let's do this so david and i started talking and david's like i got the money you guys have the know-how let's yeah, do a deal let's together. Put it together so i did my first deal with david murdoch jr oh okay at 140 south cliffwood in brentwood park House is still there today. I think yeah. it's been remodeled a few times since. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is in the 90s? This is in 94. Yeah. 1994. Wow. I was 24 years old. Then my wow. first deal was an 8,000 square foot house. My first bill at 24 years so old. So were you we a licensed contractor? No, 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 no. So you're uh -huh. an owner contractor. Owner builder. Yeah, yeah owner, owner builder. builder. So you don't wow. need to li be licensed. But you were the builder on that project. I was the builder, but you know, you my, my dad, he was there like every other day. And then we also hired a superintendent and, and the subs, you know, sort of walked still, us through the was... process. But yeah, and we all came out and we made a lot of money and it was great. We actually sold it to a guy. I could, I could tell you his name. Because uh, he doesn't live there anymore, but Bob Byer. Yeah. And Bob Byer's like a well known guy in Los Angeles. Yeah. I think he was, uh, he had funded uh, John Arrow for a period of time. Maybe, yeah. He was the backing behind that real estate wow. firm. So at you're one making time. money so, early. Yeah. In your so 20s. it was like, yeah, all of a sudden I just made a half a million dollars like in 18 months. And I was just like, Oh my God, this is, this is insane. Money. So I, you know, I enjoyed working with my dad, but then, you know, when we actually went and did our own deal, this is like, okay, wow, so I can make all this money. Yeah. So then at that, 
you know, period in time, I was like, okay, I think I sort of found what I want to do because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. You know, I was sort of like, you know, just going from one school to another school to another school. Yeah. I never excel. I never went to college, never got a degree, never went to a university. I went to Santa Monica city college and right. took a few classes, but I never found anything with, that interested me in the, and then the interesting thing about it is the whole time I was in construction, but never really thought, oh, this is what I'm going to do it. for a living. So and then all of a sudden, that's when it was galvanized. We did it. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I was bing, like, bing. Like, wow, all these yeah. skills I've learned, I can mm -hmm. actually make bank. <laughs> <laughs> so that Especially wasn't the plan. Then. It that was, was a lot more money back that's then. That's really interesting, than it is though. Today. But like, there. From 14 to 24, it wasn't the plan of, hey, I got to learn this trade and that trade and I'll learn the finance and then I'll be a developer. It was you were just working because that's what your family yeah. did. And, working and I was and, sort of just, yeah. And then, and then we just, this, uh, this one thing deal came to, upon us. Yeah, like, let's do it. And yeah, my friend, his, you know, his parents were extremely wealthy and uh, and it just, it and just it worked. worked out. It worked out for it worked out for me, but it also worked out for him because his sure. dad's like, David, I, you know, he made you're good in money your on early 20s. You need to start doing something here. And he's like, OK, dad, well. How about I do this? And then, yeah. so it worked out great for both of us. Got it. Now, did Very that exciting. partnership go on for a while or was that a one-off? It was a one-off kind of one deal. Off. He went off on his own after that. And then I actually had um, met Grace, which is is now my wife. Your wife, who um, works with you, right? She runs correct. sort of operations. Yeah, and she's behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, helps run manage the office, the books, yeah. budget tracking. That's great. So there's a we push a lot of paperwork. I'm sure these um, are massive budgets, and massive. a lot of moving yeah. parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's yeah. like here, Mister Owner Client. Here's your bill package, and it's three hundred fifty thousand this week. Yeah, and next week it's five hundred thousand. Yeah, that, and that's just what it is. They're big houses. They're big with houses. Big budgets, and you know we got to keep the money flowing. Yeah. Otherwise, the the subs, the natives, get restless. Yeah. So they're they like, need to get paid. These yeah, guys are millionaires. And like, yeah, yeah. And they don't want to like finance our project. So like the guy in Beverly Hills, actually the bank that's funding that project, they were a little slow in, with payment. And I'm like asking the foundation guy, I'm like, we need to go faster here. He's like, you want my full attention? Well, you need, you need to, to pay, pay me. me faster. And they don't and come to like, you to fill the you gap know, or do that. All of a sudden, like before I started looking at the invoices, and I'm like, yeah, you're $150,000 out. You know, and that's so he's huge. like, he, that's 150000 that he just had to be financing the project. He's financing and, it. So <sighs> the subs don't want to finance our project. No, of so course not. Keep these are big flowing. numbers and that's yeah. a major commitment. Yeah. That, I mean, the, the, that's when I talk about pressure and we joke about it, but there really is pressure. And there's pressure on all these subs, each sub. I and mean, for this guy to be putting out 150000 in relative to what that means to his business and his life. I mean, that's probably a massive amount of pressure it is, and risk. It is. And he's a big operation. He has like yeah. 50 employees. So I'm not yeah. his only job. Right. So he right. might have a half a million out at one time yeah. or 750,000. Who knows? But yeah, he's he has so to put a lot of money. So starting from going. there in your 20s and, you know, for how many years you were you building a house a year or a couple of houses like over the next 10 or 15 it was like, years? You know, it was one house every 18 months. So so after the Cliffwood house, then we went over and did a just a started really at the top. started on Cliffwood. It pretty much. We sort of started at the top. Yeah. Cliffwood, Brentwood Park. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't get much better than that. I mean, I'd love to live on Cliffwood. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went and did a house on Tiger Tail. Yeah. And there was this incredible home it had. We built like this waterfall swimming pool. It was like 5,000 square feet. It was traditional. Um, so right. the interesting thing about that is we started doing what my parents were doing was we would we would develop the property. We'd move into it for like a year uh, and then we would sell it. And, it. you know, and if you were, you know. That was part of the process. It was part of the process. You Get can the actually. Tax benefits. Tax benefits. Capital gains. Yeah. Um, I hear so, not so many, but I've heard from other builders that that's really where they made their most money. Buying homes that they've lived in and selling them in a couple of years. Yeah. And not being afraid to pack up the family and move as much of a hassle as it may sound. Yeah, correct. The amount of money you could make if you do it right yeah, is it's a huge business. It is. It is. And once again, we hit the nail on the head when we went and so you that lived property. At, you lived at Tiger Tail. We lived on Tiger Tail. It was an incredible, incredible place to live. Incredible property. Um we were uh, sad to leave it, but um, bigger things uh, were ahead ahead of us in the future. So we were excited for the next venture. Yeah. Um, but that was another interesting story. We went to go sell that property and it just, you know, sort of a sign in the marketplace, um, which was, you know, peaking at the time when we went to sell that property was um, 
literally, I think the second day on the market, we received an offer over asking. Yeah. And the interesting thing about it was this guy walked into our open house and sort of looked not so put together, like torn up jeans, torn up shirt, <laughs> walks in, walks the house what? once, comes back, looks at, looks me in the eye, says, I want to buy this house. I'm like, okay, <laughs> great. <laughs> but, you know, I was like, Who okay, this, this guy's guy? totally screwing with me because he just did just not. Didn't like, have the look. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. But this is <laughs> LA. Everybody's in jeans and Flip t-shirts. And, and, yeah. Yeah, and Yeah. But. Usually, usually my, the richest guys are. They, well, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So he was this famous Hollywood director. There you go. Uh, I can't tell you his name because he's still in the yeah, house. They, we don't want to create um, any problems. Great guy. Amazing guy. Um, and uh, yeah. And all of a sudden, like, you know, the next day was like over, over, um, ask, overpriced. What is it? Over. Over list. Yeah. Over list offer. Yeah. All cash. Like two week close. And we're, I just look at Grand my slam. wife, Grace, and I'm just like, are you kidding me? This is like. But we were riding that real estate wave. wave. Yes. And that's what it is in Los Angeles. You yes. know, you know it is. I yes. mean, you've seen You've been in this business for a long time. Yeah. It's all timing. It's all timing. It's either it's going You up ride that wave and down. you could wipe out and mm. lose everything, yeah. right? It yeah. Just, you ride that wave. And, and I've got another be, story about that. Yeah, I've got I the imagine. Story. I know you've been on both sides of I this have. wave. I have. Uh, and so have I. Oh, God. So you rode the wave for a while. Mm. Rode the wave for a while. Then Big we time. A, yep. Then we um, we moved out. We and you're found, rolling it into next house, roll, next house. Yeah, rolled it into a really big property on North Barrington. Uh, on a street called Halvern Drive. Yep, of course. Yep. And um, once again, the house turned out amazing. It was another 8,000 square foot house. Uh, looked into this incredible green belt, had a pool, had like this 5,000 square foot deck. I mean, the thing was ridiculous. Yeah, and of some course, of those lots on Halvern are, are just Yeah, sick. they're amazing. There was that one that yeah. sold last year that kept going. Had all those four or five structures that just kept going and going mm. and going. Yeah, yeah. I think I remember that. Um, and so, yeah. And then the fun thing about these things is that we actually got to live in these houses. So you're enjoying them. We love to entertain. We love yeah. to party. And these you are like, like party, party houses. Grace likes to party. So we, yes. <laughs> it's a fun group for sure. Uh, yes. So, um, so once jacuzzi, again. Jacuzzi parties, champagne. Lots the of usual. jacuzzi party, parties <laughs> till probably four in the morning. The neighbors and, must just love you. Uh Brentwood Park neighbors are just thrilled about those 4 a.m. jacuzzi parties. <laughs> we were on top of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of fun. Um, so, so things are again, going well. The business is growing. You're building bigger and bigger homes. We are building bigger and You're bigger homes. You're riding the wave. I'm going yeah. back now. You're riding the wave. Right. I want to lead you right. up to the wave starts to, crashing on my it starts to close out <laughs> there's nowhere to go the tube yeah the tube you're uh -huh. riding this tube and the next thing you know it's mm. closing out into the reef and uh-oh i mean and this is high stakes this is so okay. this is a lot of money at stake with well, this, this one yeah so we were at the pinnacle of our career and this is you know we we so we developed and sold the north barrington project mm-hmm did great. It was amazing. Uh, I think, and then after that, we went on, did a few uh, really successful projects with my parents. Can't remember where they were. They were Brentwood Park or Riviera. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, then did another pro few projects after that on our own in Mandeville. Mm -hmm. Very successful. I remember Mandeville. Yeah, there were two. We had two in Mandeville. One of them we actually lived in for like 10 years. Uh, the one had a huge party, I remember. Yeah, we have huge parties Probably at, both at of all of them, <laughs> all of them. So now we're like talking into the mid 2000s. Yes. Zone. Yeah. Sort so of the we peak started of the last market. Yeah, yeah. So we started this project, another one on Tiger Tail. Yeah. Started that on t in 2006. That was sort of like the pinnacle of our development um, um, history, I guess you could say. Yeah. A business. Uh, so we decided to build a 12,000 square so foot it was house. A big one. It was really big. And uh, we did, a lot of these houses we've designed ourselves. Right. So not only are we, you know, experts in building, but we also design homes. And, you know, and I learned that, you know, thank God through my parents. Yeah. They taught me that uh, skill. And, and they're um, beautiful homes. I mean, you've built 
meticulous, stylish, yeah. very custom We're feeling very, homes. Are, uh, it's not a generic type of thing, yeah. and it's certainly not a big white box. It's the opposite. Every home you've done is always it's always like that's when that home comes on the market everybody's Thank blown you. away by it. Thank it's you. not like, oh, here's another spec, new, shiny home. It, it's quite the opposite. So you're mid-2000s, things are booming. Things you're are rolling really into bigger, booming. bigger, this yes. is Tiger Tail. And yep. you're thinking, what, this is going to, a 12,000 square foot home, what was the exit price projection? I mean, projections you're thinking, were 14 to 16 million. Okay, and so I think, yeah, yeah, double I mean, digit maybe millions. a little um, aggressive at the time. But, but uh, market was going crazy. It was crazy. sort of like a one-off, one-of-a-kind home. Yep. It was just, just absolutely fabulous. In the best part of Tiger Tail. Um, so, yeah, I distinctly remember August 2008. Mm. We're getting, you know, the house isn't finished, but it's almost finished. Mm. I, you know, we have two or three more months left, you know, and we had the big stock market crash. crash. It was just like. So what is. It was horrible. The pressure and, we, and the we, pain. Well, we have these neighbors. You know, I'm, I, you know when I develop these homes, I'm in the, I'm in the neighborhood for 12 months or yeah. 18 months or even 24 months. So I become friendly with all the neighbors. You know, and they're taking walks in the neighborhood. And I'm like, oh, hey, Greg, how are you? And so, you know, the neighbors are coming by. Oh, my God, I'm just so, I feel so bad for you, Greg. This is horrible. And I'm like, what do you mean? We just built this incredible house. What are you talking about? Like, oh, my God, we're just, we're going to do so well. This thing's going to make, you know, record-breaking sale. I mean, I was so excited about it. And, uh, and I, you know, because I had never been through, you know, a crash. Yeah. Or it crashed like that. Yeah. I just had no idea. Yeah. You know, and these are like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm 36 and they're in their, um, you know, 50s and 60 years, right. 60 years old. So they've, they've seen this before and I haven't really had experience with any type of market crash. Um, and so sure enough, uh, things were bad. Things got really bad. And, and you have um, huge carrying costs, obviously. Massive. I mean, so we are paying $75,000 a month. A month to carry that property, seventy five a and month, and obviously millions tied up in the house. Yeah, yeah. So went back to the oh. bank, Vineyard Bank, which is no longer around because uh. you know Vineyard Bank. That's actually what they specialized in was so they got spec hurt. development. They got killed. They they got killed. Yeah, there yeah. there is no more Vineyard Bank. Yeah. Um, and I wish they were still around because I could possibly still be doing business with them. <laughs> um, so yeah, I went back to Vineyard and I was like, uh, "What do you do now?" We're now we're like in January, and it's like house it's, has been finished. It's been on the market, and and we've been slowly reducing the price. Started to chase um, the market. Yeah, fourteen, not, yeah, and then thirteen, and then twelve yeah. million. And then 11 million. Yeah. And so this so, is over less than six months. This is three or four month period. Yeah. And you're dropping prices. You're paying, writing huge checks. Huge I mean, checks. What is coming out of my pocket? How do we explain? How do you articulate that <sighs> kind of pressure? Well, to a it's normal it's, person. That, gut we wrenching, all wanna, gut wrenching would be. Yeah. I mean, we all want to list these mansions and build mansions. We all think, yeah, they'll do great. We hear the stories. We make millions. My God, buddy. And people do. And you do. do. But this is the reality of if timing Mm -hmm. turns. Yeah. So it's gut wrenching. Yeah. So I went back to the bank. I said, you know, we, you know, is there any possible way, you know, you can modify, modify the loan, possibly, you know, add to the interest reserve. Um, And so obviously all of their loans uh were similar additional other spec developers yeah, we're all doing hurting. the same thing yeah so we we're all in the same boat so yeah there was not another penny coming from them Got uh it. so then it was sort of like knocking on the door of the family members we need help can i borrow five hundred thousand dollars to keep this thing going, going you know another four or five, six months and hey, don't worry, I'll pay you back, back and blah, yeah. blah, blah. And so now you're going on personal favors, family, mm-hmm. friends. I mean, yeah. and what, what it talk was, about gut wrenching and uncomfortable. Extremely, extremely. Yeah. Whew. It was just like the world sort of crashing in front of our eyes. Um, so how long did that take to so, sell? You know, and, luckily we built an amazing home. Yeah. The product you know, was, it was There was nothing like it on the market. And uh, someone saw it. That actually had to have it. And the interesting thing is we actually showed that house, even though it was during the crash. I would I remember between January and March, we must have had 50 showings. A lot of people loved the house. They were yeah. very interested in it because we had developed something that nobody had really seen right. at the time. 
thank God for that. So yeah, that probably sped up the process. Of it did getting it, it did. sold. It was probably the, the standout house, but still, but with still, bad timing. You get very fifty people timing. through, and they're afraid to pull the trigger on the <laughs> they standout house. They were all house. afraid to pull the trigger. Yeah. That's really what it was. Yeah, you know, they was all frightened. loved it. And I think everybody felt like everybody would have written an offer, but yeah. um, but it happened to be that you know one person who. Uh, came from a lot of money another i think possibly billionaire um so had the wherewithal to write the offer and so uh luckily knock on we we did sell the house sold for nine three nine remember three. we yeah we we, 12 to 14 16. even 15 yeah yeah whoa so, so 50% below what you thought your best case may be. Yes. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So what does that do to so, your profit margin? Well, profits went up in smoke. Some e- yeah. equity went up in smoke. Luckily, yeah. I was able to pay, People. you know, pay the creditors back, pay most of the family back. So that's um, what happens in that situation. Yeah. And that's yeah. a win. And then and I was one of the lucky you, ones. That was a lucky one. So you yeah. were able to think, pay the debts yeah. and walk away from it after paying everyone. Yeah. And that was lucky. But what the end result was, there's like the house that we lived in for 10 years in Mandeville Canyon, then we had to sell our house and move. Mm. We couldn't afford to stay there yep. anymore. Yep. Because we actually- All the money was tied up into Leveraged the, the that house to do the Tiger Tail project. See, this is high stakes development, guys, that we all mm. want to do. This is yeah. the, the, the so sexy you. high stake developing on the West Side. So what's the lesson learned is what is the lesson learned other than use other people's timing? money, <laughs> use other people's money. But can you, But mo- the, you know, I unless mean, you're a super experienced, this, a lot of the, you know, this development was funded under our own steam, you yeah. know, which was that, which was tied to that house. Yeah. So yes, we did get a big loan from Vineyard Bank, but at the yeah. same time, you guys were putting up equity. We too. put up a lot of equity, a lot. So that goes down in 2008, 2009. That's correct. We're still yeah. in the bottom of the market. Correct. You're now reeling yeah. after a huge run up and a huge success over many years. You're now f- experiencing massive failure for your first time in your development career. Uh, the whole world's yeah. crumbling around pretty you. Pretty much. I mean, everyone yeah, in, your, in your business and mine were getting at we're getting out of business obviously the brokers were getting out the bill so what yeah, what i was, saw that a lot of real estate agents your, yeah 50 or more were out yeah got out crazy. maybe even more it's also a good time to get in yeah if you could do it yeah if you could you do could, it and if you could yeah, survive it survive you know, it those of us that survived it and came out the yeah. other end were yeah. stronger for it well just that was, like the builders too so yeah i mean that was something that we we we'd never seen and we weren't used to because you know, every project we had been in prior to that, whether it was five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten projects, were all like these super smash success. Yeah. Home runs, Just home runs, big home time. runs. Home runs. So what happens yeah. for you guys in your development business at that point? Did you guys take a pause? Did well, you pivot and shift into doing work for, you know, other owners? What what that's, happened in that's that? That's exactly what we did. Yeah. And then so it was sort of like yeah, we looked at each other. My wife and I were just like, what the hell do we do now? Yeah. And I was like, and I looked at Grace and I was like, well, you know, what are we experts at? What do we specialize in? We know how to build and, sure. and we're really good at it. And we know how to design houses and we're really good at it. So that's so where that started. That's taking when off. Shane Development Got started. It. So a new business, the Phoenix Rises, you pivot from the ashes. Yes. You pivot. Mm-hmm. Makes total pivoting. sense. And, and, and then uh, at, so how long did it take before an owner user had the confidence for them for, to, buy, to build a house and say, I need to hire someone. Cause the owner users were scared, uh, as well. So did you immediately start getting clients that are like, we're ready to build? I think, you know, it, it actually was, there was some immediate, um, the jobs man. tied to the tiger tail project. Cause there's some people that, that saw, saw tiger like, tail and they're like, this? wow, yeah, I want to yeah. do this. Um, so actually we got a lot of design, design projects, you know, like, Hey, can you design me a house and then build my house? Yeah. So we actually did design somebody house that was very similar to tiger tail, like, and it was going to be 10,000 square feet. And then, you know, we went through the whole design process. I think that probably took eight months to a year. 
And uh, and then they actually pulled the plug on the project. Oh, no. After 10 months? <laughs> yeah. Of designing and, you know, putting the plans and the engineering together. And we were just like getting ready to submit it to the city. And then something happened to their finance. And, yeah. And they change, pulled the plug. Change of plans. I, but that's, you know, it's just, happens. it happens. I mean, it's, it's a roller coaster it's and it's the things you can't beast. control. So, you, you know, I'm sure that's with real estate too. You course. could be showing somebody a house for two years and then you get into escrow something. And, and like, ah, then no they pull longer. The plug. Yeah. yeah. No just, longer buying a house. Oh, don't remind yeah. me. You just have yeah. to roll. We roll with the punches. Yeah, you have to be just yeah, thick skinned and very just thick. resilient oh, because we're just getting goodness. punched and kicked. And so, what do you feel now? You know, this was ten. You know, what are we now? Two thousand. Yeah. This is like ten years yeah, ago. You've now built a massive construction design business, building mansions and estates for other people. Correct. So that's become a very lucrative business. You've had this past of being a spec I would say builder. it's been a very good business and okay. it's steady. Well, the that's what I want to know. What, spec compare this, your spec, spec versus yeah. your owner user. Well, spec is not steady, you know, and it's sort of, you can't control the market. You don't know what's going to happen. So, right. okay, you can just like what happened in 2008. So you can, you can build the most amazing house in the world. Uh, and everybody that sees it, nine out of 10 people are like, oh my God, I have to have this house. Right. But then so there's something happening in the marketplace and nobody's nobody's writing offers. And then all of a sudden, it's $75,000 a month or $100,000 a month in payments. And all of a sudden, that's going to eat you alive. So yeah. these are the things we cannot control. And that's like- That's the risk. That of. was the biggest lesson. And that is the risk of development. You just don't know. You can't control it. And then it. If, they're, if the market's going up and you're riding that wave and then boom, you can, like you said, knock it out of the park. And all of a sudden you just say, wow, I just made $5 million in two years. Yeah. So, and there's plenty of those success stories in Los Angeles. Yeah. I think right now we're seeing a, a turn in the market. Right. And we've got a ton of product on the market right now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a- ton of homes that are being built about to come to market. Right. And so, now we're we're seeing homes that are that are high, higher in like the highest priced homes, homes that are being built that we've never seen before ever. Correct. Um being built here in Los Angeles. I don't think there's any city in the world that are building homes like we're building here in Los Angeles. Yeah. Whether they're 20,000, 50,000 hundred thousand square foot homes that are you know the selling price is 50 million 100 million 200 million now we're even people are talking about the 500 million yeah. up in bel air yeah. so but yeah there's this risk with development so with the general contracting what we're doing it's uh it's more steady and it's safer and it's that's our bread and butter and it's been very steady and so but we're doing both so we are working for owner users and we're developing dream homes for them yeah and we're also working for developers like that project i told you in beverly hills yeah it's ten thousand square feet it's for a developer it's a spec house right so but we're not doing your, a little both but you're not the developer i am not the developer yeah. so you're yeah out of the development that part of it for now yeah. Yeah, do you see now. yourself getting back into that uh, as things change and evolve? or do you Definitely, for sure. Yeah. But I want to do both. You want to do both. Have because more we, of a diverse portfolio. Correct. Because we can't control the market. We can't predict the future. We don't know what's going to happen. Understood. Yeah. What do you see now? Um, I mean, these homes, like you're building in Beverly Hills with this, these foundations and basements. So just for people that haven't seen a lot of these homes, what are some of these? Tell people about some of the amenities you're seeing in these 20, 30,000 square foot homes. That, what are some of the trends, some of the amenities, things that people are asking for, things that you're seeing? I'd be curious to get, you know, kind of get your take on what you, what you, the fun stuff, the spas, yeah. and the wellness centers. And well, the, well, there we go. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, I love all that stuff. Me too. And I want to, wrong with the spa, you know, the, the, wellness the, center. the more, the better. A little cryo. Uh, the bigger, the better. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> Um, and you know, we're, we're at a, you know, the homes that we develop are at a high end, you know, and so, you know, we're developing these homes and I would call them 20 to $30 million homes right? and they're mansions, but I don't know if they would be the, they're the mega, mega mansions or the mega Uber mansions. Um, right. I, I was just telling you earlier that I had come from yesterday. I was very fortunate to see a house in Bel Air. Uh, it's listed Bel -Air for- Road. 
I'm sorry? On Bel Air Road. On Bel Air Road. Yeah. 924 Bel Air Road. You guys can Google it. Yeah. Mikowski's. Uh, yeah. Bruce Mikowski's house. I was very fortunate to get invited to a private showing of that home yesterday. And I was, yes, spectacular <laughs> is. Understatement, really. It is. I mean, words cannot describe what I saw. I was really impressed. Well, that the means finishes, a lot. With the what designs. You've seen. And yeah, and we're seeing a home here. It has a four lane bowling alley, it has a car museum. It has a theater that can hold 40 people with these custom-made Louis Vuitton friends. leather chairs. Yeah. Um, it had over 60 speakers. They actually invited us into the theater yeah. and gave us a demo of like a three-minute movie. And you have speakers like coming coming from under your ass, <laughs> above your head. You're shaking. Like behind you, you're like, where is this? You're not going to have that type of movie theater experience at like the top AMC. No, I mean, no it was chance. just like something yeah. I've... Yes, and then Beyond. some. I mean, it was like, it was Got so the helicopter incredible. helicopter pad, even though you can't They actually, helicopter. the helicopter was removed off the property because yeah. I think they had some restoration that they needed to do to it, but I guess it's coming back. Yeah. Uh, you know, this incredible elevator. They had a chef kitchen that's like enclosed in glass, and they're telling me, well, when you have your celebrity chef, like Bobby <laughs> Flay comes over, oh, of uh, you know, everybody can stand outside and peer through and the watch, glass and watch, watch Bobby and his Flay. Magic. His, exactly. <laughs> um, and so, it. yeah, I mean, it just- It's all normal, the, normal oh, stuff. With the car museum and- it was that, just that one, one thing I've the never Mikowski's? I've never seen a house actually like that. In my yeah, life. Actually, well, here. So I walked it early on. But did that oh, one did. have the nightclub okay. in it? Did I don't recall. Loud? No, I don't think that this had a, bar, a nightclub. nightclub. Anyway, yeah, it's spectacular. But there's and, an, there's actually another property that I heard it's the owner would take two hundred million for. It's on ten acres in Bel Air. It's the old Conrad Hilton Estate, mm -hmm. and that is a home that's like. A home where acreage, you, right? Yeah, that's that's. I mean, nine two four Bel Air is an incredible home, and not to take away from it, yeah. it's a house. This is like a true estate. A, yeah, like something that you would like in from England. Yes, just the countryside, like a kings and queens. Yes, like so land that just keeps going and going. It does. Yeah, yeah. So I've actually the person that I was telling about, David Murdoch Jr., yeah. that was his dad's house. And yeah. so we used to hang out there in our teens. And it was I'd like- get lost up there. Oh my God, 10 acres. Like they had a driveway that went around the whole property. And we used to drive go-karts around it. And they had actually had its own gas station. Yeah. So talk about like real wealth. Like you have your own <laughs> gas station Th Thanks for the invite on that one. Go-karts, <laughs> go-karts. I'm glad that I That was after our relationship. Damn. Because Damn. like at that spin the bottle party we went to, you stole my like- I stole your girl. Oh, but yes. So <laughs> that's why you weren't invited to that. Damn. It wasn't worth it. Oh, it wasn't goodness. worth it. I could have been riding go-karts yeah. at Murdoch's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said that's, what are some of the other things you're seeing people ask? I, the, the wellness centers well, seem I mean, to be huge a, now. Yeah, the wellness centers and the spas and the movie theaters and the bowling alleys. And like you said, the nightclubs and this guy, the guy that's doing, developing the $500 million house. All the things a Russian oligarch needs. Yeah. To be comfortable. Developing this rooms where all the walls are fish tanks and it's like uh, the jellyfish room, oh, they Niles, call it. Yeah. Niles, uh, yeah, and, and Ray's building the cannabis room, Ray. Oh, uh, oh okay. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, it makes sense today. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. And they have, yeah, they have actually, in some of the kitchens, they have um, all the live refrigerators. So you could, you be, you have your, you know, you open up this refrigerator in your kitchen and it has live lettuce and live whatever, fruits and vegetables. What do you mean live? It's growing in it's there? It's growing the soil. in the refrigerator, yes. So, yes. so it's as fresh and organic as yes, it can be. Yes, in your kitchen. So you know, when you have a kitchen large enough to house, I don't know, you know, your regular refrigeration and then your grow refrigeration. Oh my God, Greg, what does so, this world come to? But the thing is, is that it's all, it just seems, it doesn't seem like, because there's so much excess and we're seeing it all, and everybody's like, well, what new can we do? Well, how do you top it? We, hey, yeah, how do you top it? And it's just like, I guess, okay, yeah, the movie theaters keep getting bigger. And he had a four-lane bowling alley. So now we're going to do a six-lane bowling alley. And like, yeah, that's his, a... and you had a car museum. Well, I'm going to have a two-level car museum. So Wave pool. That's how you I, top it. <laughs> there wave we go. pool. I wanted an indoor. Kelly Slater wave pool. Yeah, yeah, that okay. tops it. No, I wanted an <laughs> indoor electric go-kart track. Like, oh, um, that'd be what so is it? Money. It's called K1, K1 speed yeah. or something. 
Oh, that's what I want at epic. the bottom of the basement. Just like so, at Murdoch's house. Here you go, cruising the well, go-karts. Well, that was outdoor. I'm talking indoor. <laughs> indoor track. Indoor electric, yeah. So where do you see the trends going? I mean, at some point, there's gonna, they're going to stop building these mega mansions. You can only build so many of them. And Well, the trend has been like, yeah, super ultra contemporary. Yeah. So I, we're definitely seeing a shift in that now because yeah. those were, I think, sort of cold yeah. and yeah. people want warmer they now. They don't want the white so, box. To- yeah. Slick, stark. Yeah, so we're definitely seeing a shift in that design trend that is happening right now. Yeah. Right now. I know people that have, they designed their house maybe two years ago. They broke ground maybe six months ago. Yeah. And now, like, their designer's like, changing whatever we had planned, let's not do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to do this now. Yeah. Even though the outside of your house looks like X. Yeah, the inside we're is- We're changing the inside to Y because- right. It just, these design trends are changing overnight. Yeah. It's just like the real estate market can shift overnight. Yeah. Just like the stock market. I mean, yeah. I, every all this like- Up, down, and all around. It just it just changes <laughs> and we nobody has control over it. Right. You just got to try and play catch up. Yeah. That's what we're all doing. We're, we're playing catch up. Yeah. If you're so, trying to stay on the edge of design yeah. and be in front of the trend. Yeah. Then yeah. yeah. I mean, stop. actually- It's I've a been, moving target. The goalposts are moving. I mean, you know, I've been actually was talking with a, a pretty um, renowned architect here in Los Angeles. I was speaking with him yesterday and he's- He's like, yeah, now with this shift of this these ultra high contemporary white boxes, like maybe we should start looking back at looking back into classical architecture. Yeah. Yeah, I see you that. You know, let's start maybe looking at that again. I see a lot of my most refined, most cultured, wealthiest, savviest clients wanting that. Wanting yeah. the classic architecture yeah. and yes. completely turned off by the slick white box, which I think was chasing the young money, mm-hmm. the ho- young Hollywood money, the yeah. international, yeah, the, the Russian riche. billionaire Correct. and the Chinese billionaire, the nouveau riche, and that yeah. worked well ten years ago and five, maybe five mm-hmm. years ago. Yeah, but we've definitely come out of that. Yeah, we have. We've definitely come out of that. Yeah, and we'll see so what it, happens. With, yeah, where are the trends leading yeah. us to next. So which any, I'm any excited of, to see because I. I follow architecture. I follow design like on a daily basis. I'm on my Instagram. Yeah, you're watching. I'm on you're the internet. It. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm too. eating it, sleeping it, breathing it. Just Yeah, and I love it. I, yeah, I know you do too. I do too. Well, this is a real estate town. For sure. LA is a real, we love our real estate here. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and the proof is all this development happening. Yeah. You know, and yeah. they're building houses here. Nobody's ever seen. I mean, right. We've never seen houses like this ever. And right. And we're just like, building them at scale. I mean, there's dozens of them. <laughs> I know. And that's an understatement. A little bit of a saturation yeah. at the moment. So any, What's gonna happen. any crazy stories you want to sh- Any building stories? Any funny clients? Story, anything that you feel like you can share publicly that comes to mind? I can't publicly, imagine the no. characters. No, okay. I cannot. So you cannot. So this will be <laughs> offline. We'll have to do this. Uh, Oh, the spin the bottle was a good story. <sighs> that was wild. That was the that was the peak. That was the peak of my life. I mean, in the bottle, <laughs> right there. Starting that was starting it. of the end. That was the beginning. Of beginning the of the end. Yeah, ruined me forever. Um, so no. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, in this, I mean, like you, it's like you say, you know, over time you develop a thick skin. You don't know what's going to happen. You can't control things. Yeah. I, you know, if I, you know, when I think about. Yeah, just our conversation here today is that you know, you you just you build this thick skin over time. Now I hear I'm almost fifty years old, and wow. so I just sort of like, you know, you sort of learn to roll with the punches, and you yeah. just take things as they come, and you you know you do your best, and and I try to do my best every single day, and but what's going to happen is going to happen, and uh, you know I keep I keep striving for perfection. And I keep want to uh, expand, build my business, right? Um, build bigger homes. You know, I aspire to. You know, we're building a lot of ten and twelve thousand square foot homes, and I want to build twenty thousand and thirty thousand. I want to keep growing and getting bigger, and yeah. and keep dialing in my operation. You know, we have we have project superintendents, we have project managers, we have a we're going to run a very tight billing office. But you know, how can we keep building on that and make that make them you know make the machine just you know keep those wheels greased and just keep perfecting our operation yeah. that's fine-tuning fine-tuning yeah, fine-tuning the art fine-tuning and yeah 
yeah calibrating any advice you'd give to builders or someone that wants to get into development i mean obviously we've talked a lot about the high risk high reward but any thoughts you would have for someone that wants to build homes and get into it i think um don't do it <laughs> no do it do it do it uh you know, I think it's it and it always it depends, you know, what what level you're looking to do it on. Yeah. You know, we're we're in the high end market. So when you're in the market that we're in, I think developing a team is really important. A trusted yeah. putting together that trusted team. So even starting with you, a real yeah. uh, you know, a real estate agent that's top in his field, that's been around the block many times and been in the business for many years, you know, to, you know, help them with the marketplace, where to buy, you know, location, 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 right. and what price to pay and where you want to exit, uh, to, you know, finding the right builder, the right architect, the right designer, the right engineers, these, you know, these consultants and developing that team. I think that's, that is worth its weight in gold. Yeah. You can't know. do it yourself. If you're going to have any sustainability. I don't suggest it, you know, especially in the high end. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So that that's really important. And, and like with my operation, the way I work, you know, I like to hold people's hand. I like to guide them. I like to navigate them through the process. And yeah. I think that's really important. So I enjoy it. I love it. I love the process. It, and You can tell. You can tell. You always have a smile on your face. So it's one thing I have to say. It's like, with all the pressure that you must be under at times with the high stakes and the clients that there is a lot of the pressure, entitlement and this, that you walk around, <laughs> you might be burning on the inside, yeah, on the yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah. It's very yeah. cool, calm, I, smile on your face. And I, I, I respect that and appreciate that. And it's always you. upbeat and Thank positive you. every Thank time you. I see you. So yeah, I, I'm okay. so psyched that you came and Thank chatted you. and gave us a little breakdown of the life of a high end builder. And, you know, We'll keep chatting offline about the good stuff that we can't talk here. <laughs> the cannabis rooms? Spit, cannabis rooms and spin the bottle. What else is there to talk about? So great, right, Shane. Awesome. Thank you very much. And Thank I'm looking for forward to uh, finding you a 50,000 uh, square foot house to build. So let's do that. All right. I'm ready. <laughs> I know. Today. Today. Right now. We're going right now. We got to go. We got to go. See you. Right. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Hey, that was awesome, man. I really appreciate my boy Greg coming in here. Greg Shane, Shane Development. You can always find Greg on Instagram at Shane Development. You can find me, my handle at Danny Brown LA or DannyBrownLA.com. Thank you for listening to The Deal. You can watch the video on YouTube and obviously listen wherever you consume your podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, et cetera, et cetera. You know, every other week we have an interview and every other week, I drop sort of uh, keeping it real on the deal, which is a little lesson or antidote uh, about real estate. And really what we're trying to do here is bring content and value about uh, what what do the most successful people do? What are their what is their advice? What are their lessons they've learned in their careers? And we try to pass that on to you. So we appreciate everyone following and listening, and we hope to keep bringing you more stuff. We out.